Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fate Grand Order video. What are we doing today? I'm gonna go over the actual Thanksgiving banner that should be coming up, and I'm gonna be talking about every single five star that's coming out and going over what they do. <laughs> this is gonna be a very long video, so let's get straight into it. Remember to subscribe if you end up liking the video. All right, let's go. So, this banner, um, is gonna be here until 12.06. It's very weird, I should at least address. It's gonna start on the 21st, um, which should be... Mm, reset by the time you see this. Uh, this is how the schedule kind of breaks down. In terms of the SSRs, it's it's a Stealfo Saber, it's Jean, um, Summer Jean, Semiramis, Kama, um, Akasu Shiro, Kiara, Abigail Whip, specifically Alter Ego, um, for a regular Abigail, and then the four stars that are also in there are Siegfried, uh, Summer Fran, Atlanta, Atalanta, uh, Chiron, Astolfo, uh, Mo Summer, and then regular old Frankenstein. The pairings of these units are going to be like this. So on the first day, you're going to get Astolfo and Saber Astolfo and Ryder Astolfo. And then two days later, you're going to get Summer Jean and Summer Fran. And then two days later again, you're going to get Kiara and you're going to get Siegfried. Two more days later is when you're going to get uh, Mikasa Shiro and uh, Chiron. Um, then it's two days later again with Semiramis and Summer Mo. Uh, two days again, once again, with Abigail Williams and uh, Berserker Fran. And on the very final day, <laughs> that's where you can summon for Kama. So, realistically, if you care about Kama, who is the poster child for the Thanksgiving special, her banner is actually not here until way after Thanksgiving. <laughs> So you actually have a lot of time to save up if you're going for Kama. She's not going to be here until the 3rd. So that gives you, from this video, 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 days to uh, potentially save up for her. Or 2 weeks even, if you want to take into account what will be the final day. Because it will be 2 weeks in a day, so it will be 15 days. Um, for you to get potentially enough quartz gathered up for comma. Uh, okay, so let's go over the pairings real quick. Oh, also the C's are going to be here, all the ones from the Fate Apocrypha event. So Distant Pilgrimage, Moment of Bliss, and Away We Go. Um, so let's start with the first pairing, which is Astolfo and uh, Saber Astolfo. For very quick, I won't go over actual regular Astolfo. He's always in every banner. So there you go. He is a quick AoE unit, though. So there you go. Saber Astolfo. Let's get right into it. The Knight of the Evaporated Sanity, a.k.a. Astolfo. Bunny Astolfo as well. Everyone's favorite dude. He is a limited servant. He has a saber. He has two quicks, two arts, one buster. His active skills are... This is the eventually buffed up version. The Cesar de Legistil. Strong B+. Um, it charges his MP gauge, it charges uh, the MP gauge every turn for three turns, removes the debuffs and then gains crit stars. The MP uh, up is 20%, the MP regen is uh, 20%, the stars are 20 and the cooldown is a 5. Second skill, La Black Luna Magic Flute That Calls Panic C. It inflicts terror for one time three turns to all enemies. Chance to activate the debuff below every turn. When activated, it's a 500% chance to send them for a single turn, and then he grants himself evasion for three attacks, three turns. Um, which is, I think, actually the best version of this evade. I thought Akuz is two. Two attacks for three... No. Is it? It might actually be three. Let me very quickly. I, it's been a very... I could have swore it was two, but now that I think about it, it might be three. I use Ku all the time, but I honestly don't actually... Uh, Grand Self Evasion for three attacks. Okay, yes. No, this is still the best version because there's no time limit on it. So this is, in fact, still the best version of this. Anyway. Um, activated chance of the terror buff is 40%, and the cooldown is 6. Third skill is the Majestic Triumphant Return EX. Increases on attack for three turns. Increases on crit damage for three turns. Increases on crit uh, star absorption of buster cards for three turns. And the attack up is 20%. The crit damage is 30%. And the buster absorption is 500%. And the cooldown is 5. Uh, he has magic resistance A and writing A. The third append skill is an anti-writer damage attack aptitude. Because you can't never uh, trust no one, not even yourself. 
And the Noble Phantasm is Rank B, the Volcana, Caligrante, the Fortuitous Abduction Net. It's a Rank B, quick, single target Noble Phantasm, where it hits 9 times, it deals damage to one enemy, seals their NP for one turn, and the damage is 12,000 in level 1, or uh, 1,200, I should say. Not 12,000, yeah, 1,200? 1,200. 2,000 at level 5. Uh, increases on quick performance for 3 turns, activates first. The charge up is 20% and charge level 1 is 20% at the final charge level it is 40% and that is Saber Astolfo. Um, yeah, Astolfo is really well liked and this is a good enough unit that you can use. I don't know enough about Saber Astolfo because not a lot of people talk about Saber Astolfo. I know that there's not a lot of uh, single target quick units in the game, not single target Saber quick units specifically i think it's like him and caesar and okita and that's basically it so for four for anything less than five star obviously i think okita would probably be the best here but uh stealth seems to be able to do what you want him to do which is do a bunch of quick stuff yeah kama is a single target and he's a four star there you go he's also free and this, I'm just looking at currently in NA, I should say. Um, I think Deer Mood is a single target. Lakshimba is an AoE, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah! Point is, if you are if you like Astolfo, he seems good enough that you can actually use him. The only thing that I'll say is that this first skill, uh, the MP gauge is pretty... N like, having... It's okay. I'm not sure if I would prefer... MP regen over MP gain. I feel like I would want more MP gain because quick servants typically have pretty not the greatest MP gain and they really need it. Um, they either need to have a big charger or a lot of MP gain and he has a small charger and a way to get 20%. But maybe and that would typically be okay with AoEs, but I'm just not sure enough when it comes to um, quick servants. But either way. Uh, probably a very solid unit. I'm not the biggest fan of using Terror either, but it can come in clutch occasionally. I remember when I was with my brother and we went with Gil uh, Gil Zareus and he was able to activate it a couple times and it actually saved us. So you never know. But obviously single target, more for challenge quest type stuff and eventually the nodes where you just need to kill something real quick and he should be able to do that no problem. Anyway, that's Saber Astolfo and that's his banner coming up. Next we got Jean and uh summer frankenstein summer frankenstein is a single target quick that i just completely forgot about as i was mentioning all the names of it but she is limited actually so if you want to potentially get her it's really a big pain in the ass to get summer limiteds they're not especially the four star ones they're typically not on tickets i think they've only ever been on a single ticket in jp so far they usually are not on it at all they don't like including them on there and they only include them in banners so this would be a pretty decent shot and chance of getting um, a summer unit, especially when she is a single target focus shared with another summer unit. I think that ends up being a pretty good deal. And she is a single target quick servant. So there you go. That is her. I wanted to make a note of it. Jean the Arc, aka Jean, Summer Jean, the summer version, or Jean I should say, I don't know how to say the French names. But anyway, she has one quick, two arts, two buster. Uh, her active skills are the Endless Enjoy Summer A, which is an increase to attack for arts performance for three turns. If they grant self invincibility for two attacks, three turns. 30% to arts and a cooldown of five. Second skill is the Waterfront Saintless Dolphin A, a charge to her NP gauge, an increase in MP damage for three turns, and then an increase in crit damage on the Waterside Battlefield for three turns. The MP gauge is 40%, which is a weird number, but okay. The MP damage is uh, up is 20%, and the water side crit damage is 50%, and that will rarely happen for you, and the cooldown is 6. Her third skill is the Servant Cheer B, increases party's attack for 3 turns, and then increases the attack of allies with a good alignment for 3 turns. 20% uh, up and 20% for both, and a cooldown of 5. Passive skills are Magic Resistance B and Independent Action <laughs> Celeb EX. I forgot that, yeah, she was um, she was technically a celebrity in that Lost Belt. Uh, third skill, the Anti-Berserker Attack Damage Aptitude. Uh, just to go with Summer uh, Berserker's Gene Alter, Jolter. 
Uh, and our noble phantom, phantom, our <laughs> noble phantasm is the Des Oceans de Elgrassi. No, I completely butchered that. Oh, fruitful ocean with the great happiness, A plus rank. Um, arts, uh, AOE, anti-army, noble phantasm. It hits four times. It deals damage to all enemies. It's 450% damage at MP level one, and MP level five. It's 700 and uh, 750. Yes, it's 750. Percent and then her overcharge effect is gain crit stars every turn for three turns. Um, it's 10 at charge level one and at the final charge level it is 30 if you can get her there somehow. <laughs> good luck with that one. Actually, it might actually be possible. So she's uh, very good at being a um, looper for arts because she is an arts looper for archers and she's very good at it. The fact that she doesn't have a 50% um, NP gauge will very rarely come up, I think. It will come up occasionally when you're going against nodes that have very, very, very beefy dudes in there. In which case, <coughs> you maybe won't be able to make it to the 60% requirement. But I think in general, you should be fine. Um, and even then, the MP gain that you would be getting from Double Castoria should be insane. Again, the, the to not get this, it would require, I think, some very specificness. But the point is here is that she ends up being very usable, and if you're a fan of Jean and you have Castoria, it kind of is a no-brainer. At that point, you're like, yo, let's go. <laughs> easily team up, let's get them both in there. Uh, snip, snap, easily crack. That, don't know why that's there. But either way, I think she's pretty good. And she's actually one of the ones that I want... I would want from this banner just because I don't have her. The problem is, is that I would have much rather preferred it if she was paired up with Summer Mo instead of Summer Fran because I already have Summer Fran, so I don't need more copies of her. Uh, so it might deter me from actually going for it. But either way, I think she's good, and if you're a fan of Jean, then you'll be able to easily make use of her and actually use her in a. Um, <laughs> if you're a fan of a regular Jean and you're not the biggest fan of a crazy stall tactics, which is what you do with Ruler Jean, then this Jean will be your girl for actually doing <laughs> attack stuff with. Anyway, let's move on. Next, we got Kiara and Siegfried. Siegfried is not a limited unit. He's always here. He does the big damage. He's an AoE our, uh, buster and anti-dragon. So you can, if you want to have fun times doing bonus damage to dragons, he is your dude. But he's also not limited, so I would not ever go for him, personally. Kiara. It's Kiara, not the summer version. It's just regular old alter ego Kiara. Uh, she is one quick, two arts, two buster. Her active skills are the Clairvoyance, Beast, D, plus, plus, plus. Uh, reduces one enemy's debuff uh, resistance for a single turn. Reduces their arch resistance for one turn, and then charges on NP gauge. The debuff resistance is 100%, the, ar 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 the arch resistance is 30%, and the MP gauge up is 50%, and it's on a cooldown of 6. And I think... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, second skill, Thesis of the Still Heart A+. Reduces all enemies' MP gauge by 1, removes their buffs, reduces their defense for 3 turns, and it's the down by their defense is down by 30% on a cooldown of 6. Previously, they did not have this part of them at all, and also it used to be a, a higher cooldown as well. Her third skill is the Goddess Metamorphous EX. Uh, a lot of these buffs activate for a single turn. She grants herself invincibility, crit damage, NP generation rate, um, deep up resistance, and healing res uh, received by one turn. It is all increased, and then she has a 500% chance to deal 3,000 damage without killing to self. Demerit. Her crit damage up is 50%, her NP rate is up by is 50%, her deep up resistance up is 50%, and her heal rate is increased by 50%. It's a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Authority of the Beast, D, the Independent Manifestation, E, the Logos Eater, C, and the Nega Saver, um, A, rank A. So this will make it so that she actually grants um, advantage against the Ruler class, where she deals 1.5x damage against them. This will occasionally come up, so it's good to remember. Um, third skill is an anti-ruler attack damage aptitude, it's just, if you just really want to make her full fuck you to ruler as you can. <laughs> and her noble phantasm is a rank EX after it's been strengthened. 
It is the anti-unit, um, how do I pronounce this? The Amatathaba Amidala, the Heaven's Hole, that's easy to pronounce. The Paradise of Pleasure, the Womb Realm Mandala, which all sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook to me, but there you go. Rank EX Anti-Unit, it hits three times and ignores invincibility for a single turn, activates first. Then it deals damage that ignores defense buffs to all enemies. The MP damage at level 1 is 600, uh, is 600%, and at MP level 5 it's 900%. And then she also recovers her own HP, which is 5,000 at the first charge level, and if you get her all the way to the final charge, it is 10,000. And that is Kiara, and she's uh, really good. She used to be not very good back when she first released, and she was typically looked at as like that's crazy that they basically released a beast and then just made her not very good <laughs> but since then she's gotten plenty of buffs as I've, I've shown right there and those buffs have been major it's made her extremely good um like it's just super and it, it also helped that back then arts wasn't like the number one thing to actually use and obviously now we have Castoria, and her being the Alter Ego class means that she actually has advantage against three specific classes. And then she also has this thing where she's anti-ruler as well, which occasionally comes up if you're ever fighting this really weird node that ends with, uh, with Amakasu in it or another ruler. It very rarely happens, but it does occasionally happen, and it actually does help to have, if you don't have a Berserker on hand to kind of deal with it, you can definitely use Kiara. And her kit is also built in a way that you can actually use her in challenge quests and stuff. I want to say that back when we were doing Nero Fest, we were using Kiara, and she came like super clutch in a lot of moments that was like, oh yeah, I've been kind of crazy underestimating her. Like this ability here that it just ignores invincibility for a single turn before she does it, it's super annoying if you're fighting her as a boss. But if you're fighting against a specific node that's like heavy and like um, using evade, for example, a good example would actually be if you were fighting Ku and Skahawk. Um, both of them will use evade a whole bunch, it'll be extremely annoying, but you can just ignore invincibility and you can go for the kill and not have to worry about it. And then typically after you do this, it puts it down. Typically it puts it down. It kind of depends on a lot of stuff, but it does also activate her so that she just ignores invincibility for the entire turn. So you can actually just go in there with your two arts, your two buster real quick. So I think she's super, uh, she's super good, of course. And if I'm glad to have her, I think I have her NP2 somehow. And uh, she, I've used her over the years a bunch of times, and she's always been. I've always, I'm always surprised by it. I'm like, oh yeah, Kiara, not really the first one I go to, but actually super good. Next, we got Shiron. Just to double check, Shiron is not limited. And uh, I'm Kasu Shiro. Uh, let's go right into it. Shiro over here, Amakasu. He is a ruler. He is one quick, two arts, two buster. And I want to say one of his costumes is... Okay, damn it. For some reason in my mind, it was Santa Island Mask. And it's not Santa Island Mask. It's the Phantom Thief. And I got immediately disappointed. I was like, aww. I actually like him as Santa Island Mask. Um, his active skills. Uh, skill one is the Prayer of the Long Journey which is uh, grants one ally critical star regeneration buff for three turns, and they increase their MP generation rate for three turns. The MP rate up is 30%, and the star regen is 10, and the cooldown is 6. His second skill is the Grail of Fiery Heavens EX. Um, reduces one enemy's MP gauge by one. Reduces all enemies' buster resistance for five turns. Charges on MP gauge by 20%, and then charges on MP gauge every turn for five turns. And the MP regen increase is 20% and the buster resistance down is 20% and the cooldown is 8, which I think is very important to take note of. Third skill is the God's Resolution False. <laughs> Funny. C++. Chance to bound one enemy servant for one turn and then increase own buster performance for three turns. The servant bound chance. Note, but similar to stun and like stun, this effect ignores stun the resistance and stun success rate buffs. So at level 10, it's a 100% chance of happening with a buster attack increase of 30% and the cooldown is 6. 
His passive skills are the Magic Resistance A, and his third skill is an Anti-Ruler Attack Damage Aptitude. So you can use Shiro to kill Shiro. And his Noble Phantasm is a Twin Arm Big Crunch, the Dual Arm Zero Order Convergence. Um, it's a Rank EX Double Phantasm Anti-Army, it's Buster, it's AoE. On first thing, the first thing he does is he removes all enemy buffs. Every one of their buffs gone. And then his MP damage is 400% level 1. If you get him all the way to MP level 5, it's 600%. Uh, and then he reduces their critical t uh, attack chance for 3 turns. Uh, the critical attack chance is 30%. And if you get it all the way to the final node, it's 70%. To the final overcharge is 70%. And that's Shiro. And I think he's actually, surprised to say, good. Because you can actually use him in challenge quests to... I think you should be able to do them in challenge quests. Or any specific quest where they're just constantly spamming buffs at you. You can use them to remove them with his Noble Phantasm. Or if they have any form of removable buff, he'd be very good to just be able to remove their buffs from them. And then if they do survive, he has the ability to make it so that their critical attack chance goes down. And this is big, because in a lot of fights, critical criticals just basically kill your unit in a single hit. <laughs> and then you're just dead. Um, him being a ruler means that he has resistance to a lot of classes. There's not a lot of classes that can actually fight back against him. And the and he duh, I guess you could actually make spend one of his pens to make him anti ruler, but that still wouldn't give him bonuses against rulers. It just means he does thirty percent more, so probably not worth it. But he has a couple other things like this one being able to 100% um, stun someone at level 10 is very effective. His second skill is also very effective at stalling a, um, for an MP going down. The one thing that I'll say is that this probably makes me unsure of how good he is with Double Vich. Um, it, Double Vich should make up for like the power that he probably will be lacking, but you won't be able to use this again. So I think that actually kind of limits him a bit because he's only getting 20% from the NP gauge and then the next turn he's getting 20% which is not not very good. It's actively bad. So I think you would have to do Kaleidos maybe Kaleidoscope or um, well if you wanted to do it with um, specifically hmm. With Oberon, you could do it. I'd definitely do it with Oberon. If you wanted it so that you had no Oberon and you had to use Double Bitch, you would probably use Arash on the first wave just to knock them all down, then switch into Shiro, and then with a Kaleidoscope or something that gives them pretty close, you can get use the skill to give them the last 20%, and then you can just Double Bitch at the end, and that should be enough to kill, at least in theory something you can do you can have you have to make a little bit of concessions but the fact that this doesn't give a full 50 percent it's on a huge cooldown means that you probably can't rely it and you'll have to think about it and you'll have to do a little bit more concessions in team building so that's probably what makes him that stops him from being like a brainless unit <laughs> that you can just use for a lot of things and not worry about it you have to make it work but you know if you're if you like Amakazu, i think you can definitely make it work and do all that kind of stuff Next unit, Sammy Ramos. This is the one where I'm not actually. Sammy Ramos is not a very good. Let me just end it here. Sammy Ramos is not very good. If you're a fan of Sammy Ramos, then you you want buffs to Sammy Ramos. I wish they buffed Sammy Ramos. Honestly, I wish they had made a summer version of Sammy Ramos so that I would have a new Sammy Ramos. Her entire gimmick is kind of built around poison, but it's not like amazing she has the she has this ability which is Nora's own attack and defense class disadvantage against casters which is like a weaker version of what i think um summer nero does which i even forgot that she did this to be honest and i think she is a yeah she is aoe and she is buster does she have a 50 percent even she has a 30 percent yeah, it's not very good. Um, yeah, Semiramis needs buffs. That's the basic end all of this. If you're a fan of Semiramis, I wish you the best of luck if you're going to be summoning for her. And know that I want the best for you. And I hope that you get everything that you want in the future. <laughs> including more buffs for Semiramis. <laughs> but let's go into the actual highlight of her banner. That's right, Mo Rider. Summer Mo. Or is she also known as Miss Summer Moore? 
or Miss Sue Mo I, she Was she ever called this? Anyway, Summer Mo. Uh, she is a writer. She is a four-star uh, limited servant. Usually only really typically put on the Summer Banner units. In the JP version of this banner, she was with Mordred, the Saber five-star, but now she's with Semiramis. She has two quicks, two arts, one buster. The first skill is the Cerulean Ride A, increases on arts performance for three turns, which is uh, 30% at skill cooldown of five. You can tell that she was an early year one unit because that's all it does. Rodeo Flip A+, grant self-evasion for one turn, increase on critical star uh, generation rate for one turn. 50% star regen, and that's a cooldown of 7, not very good. Third skill, Perpetual Summer B, Grant Self a Gut Stats for one time, three turns, revive with 1000 HP, and then charges own NP gauge, which is 30% on a cooldown of 7. Typically pretty bad, but 30% is uh, more than what she needs. She honestly doesn't need even the 30%. Magic Resistance B. And Surfing A is her passive skill, which the Surfing A gives her a uh, 5% uh, arts performance buff. Third skill, Anti-Saber Attack Damage Aptitude, because she really just wants to take down Saber. And her rank A Noble Phantasm is a AoE, is the a Pride Win Tube Riding, the Kingly Mood of Raining and Surging Waves. It hits five times its arts. It's AoE, it deals damage to all enemies, it's uh, NP level, an MP level 1, it deals 450% damage, and, L and at the 5th level, it's 750%, and then she also has a chance to reduce her MP gauge by 1, which is a 50% charge or charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge, it's a 90%, and that's Summer Mo. On the surface, doesn't seem very good, just because she's an early year 1 unit, but... This girl has so much crazy NP gain rate. It is insane. She is maybe one of the... I don't know if it's actually one of the best, but from using her, I can tell you, I was able to loop with Summer Mo before Castoria was a thing. Before I had Tamamo, I was able to loop with Mordred and figuring that out. And that is enough for me to say, like, yeah, this unit is insane. Um, extremely efficient for looping purposes, and for specifically, that is the only reason you would ever probably get her, besides the fact that she's Mo, and Mordred would be very nice to have. Um, the one thing that I'll say, which is the thing that I would want to say, is that in a lot of the newer nodes, she doesn't do enough damage. She has the MP gain, but then she doesn't have the damage to follow up on it a lot of the time. And if you have her at MP level 1, you would you can probably make do by either grailing her or giving her more golden foes or something like that. But I think actually what I would want is that if I could get her to have... Because really, she gets so much crazy MP gain that I'm curious how much she would be able to just get from there and deal more damage. The, th the funny thing is that you actually don't get that much from... <laughs> Because she is mostly used for uh, farming, and none of this overcharge really matters when it comes to farming. But still, it is something to kind of think about. I would definitely want her at another MP level, just so she could do a little bit more damage. I think the increase from MP level 1 to 2 is 150%. Uh, which is much more from 2 to 3, because 2 to 3 is, for some reason, 75%, and again, early year 1 unit. And then from there, it's even more crazy that I don't want to even look at it. But for the most part, I definitely would say that if you are a fan of Mordred, um, this is definitely a very good unit to have, and it's a very good farming unit. The only thing that I ever have issues with is that occasionally she doesn't do enough damage, and I feel a lot of the time, the reason Mai doesn't do enough damage is because she's level 80. And I can either grail her and make her powerful enough that it doesn't matter, or you can try and get more MP copies. And right now, I want to save my grails, and I want to try and get more MP copies. But unfortunately, she's also with Semiramis, who I like Semiramis, but girl needs a little bit more. But yeah, that's Summer Mo. I think definitely a four-star worth looking out. And again, please buff Semiramis. All right, let's go into the last of the units. We have Fran Berserker. She's always in every single banner, and she's Fran Berserker. She's a quick AoE unit that I think you can actually make use of. Um, her one negative was always that she stunned herself, I think. I think on here, yes. Fire chance stun chance to stun self for two turns, which is very bad. But I think 
it's possible now to it's not possible now never mind um also probably needs buffs now that i look at her <laughs> she's an old unit please she's doing her best anyway next abigail um not summer abby this is regular abby um the regular foreigner abby she has one quick three arts one buster which is i think a very weird kit because if i remember right she's yeah she's a buster Ew. she's a buster single target so that's kind of weird her active skills are for the scare first skill is the light within the abyss a rank a um this gets buffed eventually the chart it charges um it charges party's MP gauge by 10% every turn for 3 turns, and then increases party's MP damage for 3 turns, and then charges her MP gauge. So, the MP damage is 30%, and the MP gain is 30%, and it's on a cooldown of 7. Again, because we're now in a buster unit, it's very important to pay attention to that. Mass Hysteria B inflicts terror status for one time, 3 turns to all enemies. Chance to activate the debuff below every turn. When activated, 500% chance to stun them for a single turn. And then reduce their defense for three turns, and it's a the chance activation is 50%, and the defense down is 20%, and that's a cooldown of seven. Her third skill is the Witch Trial A+, reduces one enemy's MP gauge by one, and then reduces their attack for three turns. Cooldown of seven. Passive skill, existence outside of the domain, insanity and divinity. Mm, third skill is an anti-berserker. Her rank EX, Noble Phantasm, is the Quilfif Rizomi. Hollow tree filled with the remnant of light. It's a rank EX noble phantasm buster anti-unit. Hits four times and it removes one enemy's buffs and then deals damage to them. NP level one, it's 600% damage and at NP level five, it's a thousand. And then reduce their critical attack chance by one turn for one turn. Um, crit chance down is 30% at charge level one and 70% at charge level five and that is Abby. Pretty solid. Abby is mainly used to fight Berserkers, and she's really fully built out to specifically fight and beat up a bunch of Berserkers. <laughs> um, this ability here is pretty nice, because this is a guaranteed MB gauge lowering for a single time, and then it reduces their damage, which can be very, help um, very helpful when you're fighting Berserkers, and all they do is attack you for big Uncle Buggy damage. Um... Her first skill is technically 40% NP to herself, which is an increase of NP damage over time, with MP, of NP gauge over time, which is pretty okay. Um, not a full 50% though, which is something to kind of take, take note of for sure. It's not a full 50, so it does mean that it can sometimes throw you off with some CEs. There's a lot of 50% starting CEs, but not a lot of 60%. Very few, actually. Um... But yeah, you mainly want to use her. She even has an anti berserker pen skill. If you like Abby, you're going to use her to take down a bunch of big, beefy berserkers. And you're going to have fun while doing it, basically. <laughs> that is her main usage, and it's pretty nice, and it's pretty alright. I've actually always kind of wanted Abigail for that specific reason. But at this point, I have so enough foreigners that... Especially in the early days of the game, oh my god. When you were fighting the berserker in Eldorado... No, it wasn't in Eldorado. It was in um, Agartha. It was super annoying. If But it was much easier if you had Abby on your side. <laughs> it was super crazy annoying because it was a never-ending uh, berserker that just would not die... But when you had Abby, it actually did make it much easier. And that's kind of what you would want from a foreigner. And her being single target helps with that too. I don't know if she needs any specific buffs or not. I'm not 100% sure. She seems pretty solid from what I can see here though. That you can make do with what you got. But there's a difference between being... I don't know. It's always weird. Whenever you talk about like who are the actual top 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 top, top servants. And those always seem to be very obvious. But then when there's there's plenty of units that are just good and do their job effectively, which is what I would consider Abby. She's here to bust down Berserkers, and boom, she does that. Anyway, let's go on to speaking of how you can tell when a unit is busted. Summer, not Summer, comma, regular Assassin, comma, who is the poster girl for this entire... Um, she is literally the poster girl for all of Thanksgiving special, and she shows up way after Thanksgiving. There's also Atalanta, uh, who is a quick AoE um, servant. She's also not limited, so there you go. You will get her eventually, is my basic thought of it. Or if you don't, you can always get her on a ticket. This is Kama. She is a limited servant. 
She is Assassin. She is two quick, one arts, two buster. Her active skill are the Blessing of the Goddess B. Uh, reduces one ally's max HP by a thousand permanent demerit. Overcharges their MP by one stage for one time three turns, then recovers on HP. 4,000 HP, healed, and cooldown to five. Her second skill is the uh, Anaga 1 Without Body EX, grants self uh, gut status for one time. Increases own attack for three turns. Very important to note here, this gut status doesn't go away until it triggers or it gets removed. The, she revives with 2,000 HP, and the attack up is 30% on a cooldown of 6. Her third skill is the Mara Papias EX, charges on MP gauge, grants self-attack damage uh, advantage against the Alter Ego class for 3 turns, deals 2 times damage against them, and takes 0.5% damage from them, basically turn it to where she's a class of, she has class advantage basically against them. And then increase own crit damage by 20% for 3 turns, and then reduces all enemies' charm debuff resistance for a single turn. NP up is 50%, and charm resistance down is 40%, on a cooldown of 6. Passive skill, magic resistance A, writing A, independent manifestation C, and then love goddess essence B. Her third skill is an anti-lancer, the attack damage aptitude, and her rank C, noble phantasm, is depending on which version of her you're using, is either the Kama, Samahana, the Withering Affection is not love, or the Samsara Kama, the Burning of Affection is out of love. It's a rank C noble phantasm that is quick. <laughs> it's crazy to think that this is rank C. Hits 10, she, she like goes into space and hits you from the power cosmic. I don't know why the hell that's <laughs> rank C, but sure, let's go with it. <laughs> hits 10 times, it's a quick noble phantasm. Deals damage to one enemy. 80% chance to charm them for a single turn. The damage is 12,000 at level 1, and it is 2,000 at level 5. And then she also increases her arts uh, quick performance for 3 turns, if for the overcharge, this activates first. At charge level 1, it's 20%, and at the final charge level, it is 40%. And that is Assassin Kama, and Assassin Kama is the best single target assassin in the game, in Fago NA. For sure, 100%. No doubt in my mind. This Thanksgiving banner could have just been, Kama's gonna be here for the next two weeks, and people would still be going, damn, I'm gonna be summoning on her, because that's the power of Kama. It is hard to state how good Kama is unless you've had Kama, but as someone who has Kama, which is why I wasn't super excited when they announced the units, because I have Kama, I already know she's busted good, I don't want to try for MP2, because it already felt like I, it took a lot to get her MP1, I think. I can't remember if that was one of the summon units if we got her immediately. Or it took me a while. I can't actually remember. Hmm. It's either one or the other. But the point is, she's an insane unit. She's super good. Like, even if you discount the fact that... Okay, let, let's let's break it down. M mobile my mobile. First thing you want to look at, actually, is... This is who she's got currently as support. Uh, in NA. And that is... Uh, Scotty over here. Uh, Scotty giving 50% quick pretty good the thing that you have to take it uh, you have to take note of I think this is eventually this is now strengthened to one or pretty close to it um, This ability here Kama has a very specific ability which is that she has one that she children overcharges their NP by a single stage for one time three turns that means that if you're using her with her uh, You can use it on her to give her 25% uh, quick up instead of 20% which would be solid you could also give it to Scotty so that that makes it so that your party takes less damage and I've come around I used to be a big anti Scotty NP -er, until recently when we used her in challenge quest and I saw the light and I said actually there's plenty of good uses to use this even this specific noble phantasm there's plenty of good ways to you know, take use of it and actually take advantage of it and stuff like that uh, you can use her for that. You can use her for attack. You can use her for defense. You can use her so that you can even Man, you get the, the fact that this guts doesn't go away It's one of the best guts in the game and I don't actually I do know why it's for lore reasons that she has it But it's crazy that she has a kit that's not even fully built out for guts and she has the best guts for example Hijikata is an entire unit built around the gut status and he never got guts <laughs> I think the only other unit that got this style of guts, who was kind of focused on this style of gameplay, was the Summer Pirates, I think. Let me be sure on this one. 
If I remember right, theirs is permanent. Uh, let me double check real quick. There they are. And Bonnie and Mary Reed. Yeah, see, if theirs is one time. It's perm. It never goes away, and they revive with a single HP. And she's over here reviving with 2,000 HP still, which is pretty decent still. Um, this charm debuff ends up coming crazy when you actually are using it in, like, single... There's plenty of bosses who have, like, stun resistance, but there's actually not that many bosses who have charm resistance. <laughs> so you're actually able... I've actually had it in the past where I was able to... Some, with Kama specifically, Assassin Kama, I was able to use Noble Fan... I was able to loop with her three times in a row because of course this hits 10 times so the one thing that if you're a quick unit you if you have the thing you want the most is a lot of hits because that will help you with your NP game and this helps big time this helps her out big time this makes it so that i'm able to loop with her and again i only have her at a single copy i'm able to loop with her pretty effectively even if i only have just the noble phantasm if if they she kills them with the Noble Phantasm, she's able to get the overcharge, and she's able to typically get to either 50% or 100% in some cases, and that's enough for Scotty to come in and give the support of increasing the remainder of her for 50%, but even if she doesn't make it, or Scotty used both of them, she has her own 50% NP gauge increase. It's crazy. There's not enough... I, can't, I feel like I'm saying so much, and at the same time, I'm only scratching the surface. This is 100% a unit that is worth having. And worth getting. Um, so is it worth it to summon for her? That's going to be kind of up to you. We have in New Year's the second Vich. A second Vich will hit for go. In the end of December, we'll have Malusane. And coming up for Martha, we have nothing? Do we really have nothing for Martha? That can't be right. Who the fuck was releasing with Martha? Scotty! <laughs> this is where she gets her buff. That's right. That's where the buff is coming. And Benny Enma. Okay. This banner might actually be changed on our side. We'll see. Um, point is, Kama is really good. So if you're someone who's like, I need a, a single target assassin, once you get Kama, you'll never need another single target assassin. The, at that time, the only time you'll ever need a single target assassin after Kama is that you want to have fun with them. Like, a sad old man, old man Lee is probably looked down, not looked down at, but he hasn't talked about enough, specifically because Kama exists, and she's able to do what she does so effectively and so well done, that it's kind of still insane to watch it this many years after I've even had her. I, literally, there are times where I'm just like, you know what, I don't want to bother with this fight, can I use Kama during it? And if the answer is yes, if it's not specifically a caster... I'm like, oh, okay, I can use Kama. I didn't even know about this effect, where she's actually got class advantage against Alter Egos for three turns. I had no idea that she even did this. <laughs> and I've had her for so many years, because it's just never been like, it's just like another good thing that I just did not know she had. So there you go. 100% a good unit, and if you're going for her, I wish you the best of luck. If you're someone who's like going, I want a super crazy up, uh, up there meta unit, Kama is definitely that for you, and if you're someone who's like really debating it, again, you have to look into the future and see what you want. Now, that being said, if there is a unit that you really like, for example, you prefer uh, Benny Enma over Kama, and she is coming up in the Martha banner, a lot of people would tell you to skip, but I'm going to tell you, if you like Benny Enma more, I think it's better to probably just like save. If anything, if you can throw a single at Kama and just to, just to be like, okay, I tried, I think that's good enough. And then you can continue to save, and that's probably better a better use of your time. Especially if you don't like Kama, or if you don't need a single target assassin, really. Even even though I've gone crazy amounts of length to just tell you how good she is, if that still doesn't really interest you, that's fine. Not every unit will be the interest of you and stuff like that, and there's plenty of ways for you to make do without having a unit. Um, but I will say, from my own personal experience... She's made my so many fights so easy, because the second I see that they're, <laughs> the second I see it's a writer fight, I'm like, oh, okay, Kama just wins this for me then, and sometimes I don't even use her, but then if they're annoying me, I go, okay, 
it's time to bring in Kama. Because this, I'm tired of using the units that I like. It's time to just win. <laughs> and that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. That video is long. Jesus Christ. 40, almost 40 minutes. Um, if you made it this far into the video, thank you very much. As always, you can leave a like or comment. Um, it does help out the channel a whole bunch. Uh... I wish you guys the best for your summon. If you do end up summoning, feel free to tell me. You can always tell me in the comments how you did. Because I'm not going to be doing a video for any of these. The only one that I would potentially summon for is... Either Jean or Semiramis to get for a mo copy. And I'm still debating if I want to even do that. If anything, I'll probably try and summon for mo And see if I can get another copy for... Um, for my summer mo. And that's about it. Um, because there are there is stuff a lot of stuff coming up in the future that I actually want to potentially summon for so thankfully for me it was if I did not have comma I would definitely be summoning for comma she's definitely one of those units where I'm like if I did not have her I'd be summoning for her but I have her so I'd, I'm not summoning for her um, but yeah that's the end of the video everyone thank you very much for watching I'll see you guys in the next time happy Thanksgiving yeah also in terms of who won versus me and my brother, I won. So my, my uh, brother will be playing Mr. Bones on the channel a little bit later. Look forward to that. And that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Now, hopefully this doesn't crash like it did with uh, the Ryoma video I did. Goodbye.